Hello everyone, John Maxine here. So today I'm showing you how to enable HTTPS inspection on Sophos. I've already talked about in uh, one of my last videos about the importance of um, uh, HTTPS inspection. Uh, I showed using a EIR, a EI car file um, off the malware test site. Uh, we'll saw the difference with out HTTPS inspection and with. So um, I'll leave uh, the video description below just to add some context. Uh, sorry, the link, not the description, the link in the description below, uh, just to add context if you're not aware of uh, that test. Now, um, HTTPS inspection, uh, to set that up on Sophos, uh, is pretty straightforward and very simple. Uh, it does require work on each of the clients because essentially what we're doing is performing almost a man in the middle attack um, on each one of the clients. The, the Sophos box will have a, a certificate authority on the um, client and what happens is, is that the Sophos decrypts the SSL connection it will then uh, scan for you know uh, patterns like for your antivirus um, and things like that, and then pass it along um, to to the Sophos uh, module, where then it completes the connection. So the connection, the SSL connection, is almost decrypted in in the middle between the client and Sophos. And that's how this works. Because okay. otherwise, we would have no way of knowing what's going on inside that, SS, um, that SSL tunnel. Um, it, could be, it could be malware. It could be an unauthorized site. Anything like that would, have, um, would need this type of module, or else you would not know what's going on. So for Sophos, it's, uh, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. So the first thing is you'll go to web protection and then web filtering. And you'll see um, there's the global, the by, on by default. Okay. So I'm going to enable um, HTTPS inspection for my lab. Okay. So... I'll just have it on my lab. And then I'll go over to the HTTPS tab. And on default, they'll say URL filtering only. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do is switch that to decrypt and scan. You can also have the option for decrypt and scan the following. See, when you de decrypt and scan everything, it's going to be taxing on memory and CPU. So if you're only worried about um, certain things, you can uh, you can go ahead and and just copy and dr like uh, drag which ones are important to you here. Okay, so these are the categories of sites and then you can then you can add them as you want uh, for this demo I'll just hit decrypt and scan hit apply okay so that's about 50% of the work the next is um, so like I say there's now going to be um, something intercepting an SSL connection and pretty much decrypting it. This would be this would make browsers complain because they're going to see that something's going on with SSL. Um, so if I go over to Firefox right now, Actually, oh, I know what's going on here. 
Okay, so the problem is here is I already have the certificate imported, um, which was going to be the next step. So that's why I'm not receiving any HTTPS errors. Um, but you get your normal HTTPS errors, um, you know, saying that, hey, something's going on here. Um, so what you would need, what you need is to have the clients um, import an HTTPS certificate. So you can do it one of two ways. Um, one, you can get the certificate and push it out through the network policy. So if you're running a Windows network, you can run, you can push it out through uh, Active Directory or something like that. Or you can set up the user portal. So if you go to management, user portal. Okay, so I already have the user portal um, enabled here. Okay, and I have it for my lab network. Now, this is also assuming that you've set up users uh, for the to, to be able to access the user portal. I haven't, so I'll just use the default um, admin just for demo purposes. Do not do that in, um, do not be giving out your admin credentials. Okay, so this is just a demo here. So I'll be accessing the user portal um, instead of colon 444, it would just be 192.168.1.254 um, and you'll get to the user portal. Now I only have web filtering enabled. This also allows users, so the user portal is great. I, I've made some um, videos about this before. But if you have users, local users, say for VPN um, and stuff like that, they can download their VPN configurations. They can change your usernames. It's like a self-serve portal. It's, it's really neat. It's really nice. So what you can do from here is that the user clicks import um, filtering CA. And once you do that, um, there's then it, the, it's dependent on the browser. So um, for Firefox, uh, actually we'll do Chrome first. So for Chrome, it's settings. And then HTTPS SSL, manage certificates, click authorities click import and then wherever you downloaded wherever you downloaded the certificate so the certificate is do, 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 do. huh oh it's in downloads and then this is the certificate authority file click open it'll say what i want to trust so you pretty much you, it's a trusted certificate because we know where it came from so be okay to trust um for all this click okay and again like i said earlier i already have the certificates that's why i'm not receiving any um SSL errors and then we'll finish that and that's it now you have HTTPS inspection um, so it's very important that you do enable this I've already I've already shown some videos about the fact that a UTM without HTTPS inspection is useless um, the attackers are using HTTPS uh, more and more. You can now get HTTPS certificates for next to nothing. You can even get them for free. So the the same people like us uh, on on the good side 
who are using these HTTPS sites to secure our websites, they're using HTTPS to secure their malware sites. And uh, they're using it to secure other sites that host their tools and all that stuff. So I hope this video was informative for you and uh, helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the co comment section below. You can always email me, sean at seanmancini.com. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you.